Yo, 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 what's up, people? This is your boy P. Ross back in the building with another video. And right now, um, with the release of the new Halloween movie came out, I just felt compelled, you know, to do my countdown of my favorite Halloween movies. Um, as far as I can tell from the things that I've saw from this movie, uh, trailer, certain clips, it looks pretty good. You know, uh, we are upon the return of Jamie Lee Curtis again you know in this movie and it seemed like it's gonna be pretty hot but we will find out this weekend when it's officially released so yo let's get into the top Halloween movies in order according to how I see them All right, people, what's up? Yo, the number one movie in this franchise has got to be the original Halloween from 1978. Um, this is by far my favorite Halloween movie and my favorite horror film of all time. Um, the, the thing with this movie, for me, it was like there's not a lot of blood. You know what I mean? So what really made this movie for me was like Michael Myers, the way that some of the kills that he made I thought was so creative. You know what I mean? Um, and then in a lot of them, he did it to me in like a jokingly fashion. You know what I'm saying? Like when 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 uh, he dressed up with the sheet over his head with the guy's glasses on and then he killed the girl in the bed. Like I thought that was like comical at the same time, scary. You know what I mean? Um, but overall, there's not a film, I think, in the Halloween franchise that can mess with that, that classic John Carpenter story and that classic John Carpenter movie, music, I'm sorry, because like every, every scare to me came at a turn of Michael Myers' head uh, when he's walking, stalking his prey, you know what I mean? So for me, first Halloween, 1978, classic film can't be touched by none now the second movie in the halloween franchise that i really really enjoyed um was halloween 4 the return of michael myers um it had been x amount of years you know what i mean and this is like after season of the witch so this is i guess kind of a reboot of the series you know what i mean where you know uh lloyd strobe who had passed on had a daughter you know what I mean? Who became Michael Myers' prey. Um, I really felt like um, that the kills in this movie were awesome, was spectacular. I thought it was enough blood. You know what I mean? And at the time, it was actually scary. You know what I mean? Um, right now, when I look at it, I can actually see it. I understand it. And it's number two on my favorite Halloween movies. Let's move on to the next. Now, number three on this list is Halloween 2, released in 1981. Okay? Um, this is the Halloween where we learned that Michael Myers and Lloyd Strobe are actually brother and sister. And if you talk about gore, you talk about blood, this movie definitely had enough of it. Um, the kills were definitely sinister and methodical. You know what I mean? So... Uh, and it all takes place in a hospital. You know what I mean? So, uh, this is number three on my list. Strictly for blood and gore. Strictly for blood and gore. You know what I mean? The scene where he took the girl's head in and out of that pool of hot water. You know what I'm saying? I thought that was classic. Um, you know, so, number three. Holla at your boy. Alright, number four for me in the Halloween franchise um, is Halloween H2O, 20 years later. 20 years later, after Lloyd Strode apparently escaped and went to California and started a whole new life under a new name, um, Michael Myers found her, and you know, once again, it was on and popping. Um, the thing about this movie is, is that you had like Halloween 1 and 2, which actually connected this movie to that second one the first and second one you see what i'm saying so um for me this was like around the time where horror movies start popping again and you had your screams um what else was out back then uh i know what you did last summer and all that type of stuff um i think uh 
movies like Hostel may have been out, but this was like around that time. And for me, it was great. Another one that I saw in the theater, um, one classic moment I would like to point out is when Jamie Lee Curtis ran back to the dorm and they shut the door and then through the little window, her and Michael met out to eye. That's like a chilling uh, type of feeling that you get. You know what I mean? It was chilling for me because it's like, okay, finally they see eye to eye and now it's on the popping. So then at this point, she knows what she got to do. You know what I mean? So this is number four on my list. Okay, um, number five on my list of favorite Halloween movies is uh, Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. Um, I thought it was a pretty good movie for the most part. Um, the, 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 the problem that I had with it, I didn't really like the mask that much. Um, but that's like a small detail like I didn't like. And I also didn't understand how in part four, you know what I'm saying, they shooting this guy up. He falls down a hole. And then in part five, you see that they throw explosives down the hole. And he creeps out through a cave into a creek or whatever. And then some guy finds him and take care of him for a whole year. You know what I mean? And when Michael all of a sudden gets better, Michael kills this guy. It's like, okay, okay. One, this guy that took care of you, you know what I'm saying? Made sure you was okay. But for the guy who got killed, you didn't know who was in your bed and who in your house who you was taking care of? Come on, man. Let's keep it real. And then what was confusing to me also was the end of this movie when all of a sudden at the end, the guy came in with the, with the gun and was shooting up the whole police department. But for the most part, I thought this was a good film. And it, it remains number five on my list. All right, all right, people. Number six on my list for favorite Halloween movies, um, which I can't mention this movie without mentioning uh, the producer's cut of this movie, Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. The producer's cut, I felt, was much better. I wish they would go ahead and release this officially on Blu-ray. But The Curse of Michael Myers... Uh, it jumps like five or six years later, five or six years later, because it came out in uh, 1995. And I think the last one had came out in 89. So about six years since they had made one. And now you have uh, the little girl who's uh, Lloyd Strobe's daughter in four and five. She done had a baby. She's grown and she done had a baby. You know what I'm saying? Michael finally killed her. Now Michael going after the baby, right? Um, so this movie really is like an origin story about where he comes from and and why he is the way that he is. You know, um, one thing I found really spooky and crazy in this movie was like the old lady who was breaking down like to the little boy and his mama like about what happened to Michael Myers previously, like in the first one. I thought that was kind of spooky. But the producer's cut, I remember seeing... I forgot what movie it was, but it was a preview and they had named this Halloween, Halloween 666. And it is much, much better to me. Um, and let me add that uh, Donald Pleasant, this was his last Hall Halloween movie. Um, for all the Halloweens he had been in, he was one of the best and, and in the movies. You know what I mean? He was a staple in the movies. And may he rest in peace. So Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, and Halloween 666 needs to be released officially. And this is number six on my list. All right, people. Number seven on my list is uh, Halloween Resurrection. Now, this is the continuation of Halloween H2O where we find out that Michael really wasn't dead. He put his mask and broke the vocal cords of a, I think it was a, uh, a ambulance driver and Jamie Lee Curtis cut off his head and Michael Myers went off into the darkness or whatever. So he finally kills Lloyd Strode and he wants to go back home to find out that we are in the internet age, right? You know what I mean? So they go to his house and you know they're they're doing all this uh social media type shit you know what i mean um what's so funny about this is 
is I thought it was an okay movie. Um, but you had like Buster Rhymes doing Kung Fu on Michael Myers. And it was funny because I felt like they actually made it work. And to know that this movie actually was successful, it really just showed me that uh, uh, not only can Halloween fans love these movies, but it can have appeal to a much broader audience. You know what I mean? So Halloween Resurrection. And I believe this was my man Micah CMS's first Halloween movie that he's seen too, which, which propped him to go back and watch the whole franchise. So Halloween Resurrection is number seven on my list. All right, number eight on my list is Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. And I really debated whether or not to include this in here. I said, what the hell, because it is part of the Halloween franchise. Um, I hear a lot of people say that if Halloween wasn't in the title and they just named it Season of the Witch, maybe it would have done better. But if you take separate the film from the title Halloween 3 and you just look at it for what it is it's actually an okay movie it's not that bad you know what I mean considering some of the ones that were coming out back then in the 80s like there were terrible horror movies but th compare, compare this to some of those and you will see Season of the Witch wasn't that bad not only that Season of the Witch had that classic uh, what is it, the Silver Shamrock commercial? Happy, happy Halloween. You know what I'm saying? That shit was classic. That shit was classic. And when you looked at the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, when you looked at the, the screen and you looked at that, it looked like an old video game with the pumpkin flashing and all that. That was hot technology back then. So this is definitely number eight on my list. Okay movie. Definitely worth watching if you're getting into the Halloween franchise just to see the history. You know what I mean? So that's number eight. All right, number nine on this list. I know it don't come as a surprise to a lot of people is Rob Zombie's Halloween. Um, What I can say about this movie is it was just okay. Um, It, it took... It took the boogeyman out of the suburbs into a more uh what's the word i'm looking for a lower income area you know um i mean it was just okay you know what i mean i thought some of the kills in there were good but it was okay it was just okay that, that's all i can really say about it without really trashing it you know what I mean? I guess Rob Zombie, you know, did what he thought was best for a reboot of the franchise. But it was just okay to me. And it's number nine on my list. Now, number ten on my list. Again, I know this doesn't come as, come as a surprise to Halloween fans. But it's Rob Zombie's second installment of the Halloween movies Halloween 2 Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 to be honest I didn't like it I don't think it made any type of sense um I saw Rob Zombie say once uh he was speaking on the curse of Michael Myers that they should not have given him an identity he didn't need an identity you know what I mean because he is just pure evil and once you put an identity on somebody that makes them, I don't know, I guess it makes them look uh, uh, weaker or whatever. And I feel like that's the same thing he done in his second installment of his Halloween films. He gave Michaels an identity, explained why he was the way that he was. And me personally, I thought The Curse of Michael Myers was way better than this. So with that being said, this is number 10. All right, people, hope y'all enjoyed the video. You know what I mean? Um, what's y'all favorite Halloween movies? And hopefully, y'all will go out and check out the latest installment coming out soon. This your boy P. Ross, and I'm out.